Hey there, everybody. Welcome back with the Piper Platypus is the name. And today we're doing a unit review for none other than your new favorite unit, Tickleian. It's Tickleian. Tickleian, because she's tickling my fancy, if you know what I mean. We have got, she's equipped with the Stamp Sword too right now. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> Quick unit review on her. As you can see, I do have this unit. How do you acquire this unit? This unit is in no banner. You are going to have to go to the world map. And they come up here to Victor's Hollow in the top left corner. Boom, boom, boom. Go to the arena. And in the arena, you will have to defeat her in the fight. Now, it is a difficult fight. It's actually definitely the most difficult fight in the game. Besides maybe the level 100 stuff, that seems more like DPS checks than anything. But either way, it's a it's a very difficult fight. Um, I unfortunately beat her off camera. <laughs> I was like, all right, I tried twice on camera, and then later that night, I didn't want to stream because I was about to go to bed, but I was like, I'll give it one more attempt on my phone just so I could practice for tomorrow, um, and then I straight up won, so here we are. Anyway, we are going to take a look at her kit. Um, I don't have the stats because she doesn't have a banner where I could look at her max stats, but we could look at her entire kit still, so... Let's go ahead and first check out her passives. I like checking out passives first. So passive number one, start a battle, impart self with elemental attack up 20%. So what's interesting to note is this is a warrior. This is a wealth warrior, but they are like a, a mage. It's, it's very weird. There's they like warriors inherently aren't mages, right? Um, and you can even tell, even though she's a mage, her elemental attack is far outpaced by your physical attack even at this stage in the game um and so it's only going to get more so the fact that this is like it's an anti-synergistic combo but also this kind of stuff i think is kind of needed for um one it's cool it's cool to be a wind warrior um but also like when we if we start getting content where you need to bring warriors but you need elemental damage um then this is going to be maybe the best character in the game for that kind of stuff Definitely the best Wind Warrior in the game. Um, start a battle, impart itself with elemental attack up 20% for three turns. I mean, that's pretty good. It's not like incredible, but I like it. And passive number two, raise wind damage of self by 20%. And then just some other, you know, the, the basic stuff here, resistances and whatnot. Um, so overall, two damage increasing effects, 20% wind damage, 20% elemental attack boost. Now let's take a look at her skills here. Pretty awesome. Uh, no like super dead abilities besides maybe Squall, which I still like. Um, deal physical sword damage to all foes, stunning strike. That's just pretty good. Obviously it's all foes, but it's only one hit, but it's like a reasonable, like this is your skill one. Like it's not terrible. That's the one you get at level one. I like it. Um, Squall, kind of weak, but not like, that's probably the, my least favorite ability. Chain Windblade, deal elemental wind damage to all foes two times with a potency of 70. Um, I really like Chain Windblade a lot. Is it because it's called Chain Windblade and it looks cool and it's fun to use it after you get it? Probably. But this is like equivalent to Noelle's Mailstorm, I think. So it's one of the better wind attacks in the game. Obviously, it's not Scarecrow who has 4x wind to random foes. My cat is freaking out down here right now. Wild Cut, physical sword damage to a random foe three times. So not... So this is... Sometimes this is better than Trifold Slash. Sometimes this is worse. Trifold slash hits one target three times. The thing is, um, in a situation where you break someone on the first hit, the next two hits will still go there. Or if you kill a target with trifold slash, they'll go to waste. But this is like if you kill someone with the first hit, the other two slashes can go other places. So I would say usually trifold slash is better, but there are times you do like the random foe. Um, divine speed, it's kind of nice to have one passive or like one boost in a kit because. There are some times, like, this fight taught me that I don't always want to switch characters out, but then there's enemies that have, like, physical counter stance, right? I have a bunch of physical abilities on a character, and I just didn't want to have to switch them out, but also I didn't want to attack, so they took a counter attack. So having something like this, you could just send a turn buffing up was pretty good. Single um, deal elemental wind damage to a single foe, potency 230. So this is 50, this is 60 potency higher than uh, Squall. Very, very buff attack 230 is no joke twisting tornado elemental wind damage to a random foe three times um this is equivalent to lynette's ability right or the fire damage three times or even um um primrose has that ability but for dark 
Um, so now we have a wind version of it. Pretty good. Not the most insane. But if we look down here at the bottom, just not two abilities later, deal elemental wind damage to random foe four times. So now we this is literally Scarecrow's ability. So this is tied with Scarecrow for the best ability, best probably wind ability in the game currently um, that I could think of. There might be something that I'm missing, but this is actually going to be better than Scarecrow's, I believe. If we look at Scarecrow... Um, that's Fiora. We're Scarecrow. Let's get, um, let's take a look at him really quick before we go back. Because this is honestly a pretty good comparison, I think. He's going to be in my Tickly Cup. Um, where are you at? There you are. Boom, boom. Stats, please. Change skills. It's potency 45. So it's actually, um, so he actually... It, Tilkin has a better ability. It's higher potency. Is it 10 potency higher or 5 potency higher? Let's go back to Tilkin and party one, the best party. Da, 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 da. Change skills. 55. So it's 10 potency higher. And also, Tilkin is inherently a better elemental attacker due to her boosting her own abilities, right? She gets 20% more wind damage. Uh, the extra elemental attack buff in the beginning of the fight. Um, she also has the ability to recover her own HP. I don't think this will be used very much, but it is a very, it is a, you know, potency 165. That's a good heal. Um, like, I would say that this ability is maybe her worst ability. Like, refresh and squall are the two. Like, I'd probably rather use divine speed, but I don't think divine speed is that good either. I really wish she had, like, a way to buff her own elemental attack. Um, I think that would be pretty cool. Like, it, like I wish Divine Speed was like Elemental Attack 20%, Speed 20%. Um, it would even be cooler if it was just like Elemental Attack, Elemental Defense, and Speed. Some like super cool, um, awesome buff that you might want to use sometimes. These aren't, th these are fine. Um, overall though, I think her kit's like really, really good. Not like insane, right? I don't think... I don't think if you lack her on your account, you're going to be, like, destroyed or anything like that. But she is going to be free for everyone. And honestly, what a cool unit. Like, thematically, this is the arena champion that you then you beat and then you get on your account. And then you get to use the really fucking badass chain wind blade all foes two times. You know, hitting them, smacking them really hard. Then slicing winds is really good against single targets. Um... The idea of a warrior that uses wind magic, I think, is just a really cool idea. And so I really li I like Tilkin, which is not her name. Tickelin. Tikilin. <laughs> Don't correct me, all right? Just accept that I'm never going to say things right. Um, is one of my favorite units in the entire game, for sure. I'm very excited to attempt to get them to level 100. Um, we're going to... I'm going to start with... Uh, you know, maybe level 80, 90, or like level 90 or something like that and go from there. But super, super badass cool unit. Maybe not the strongest, but absolutely a wonderful um, tool in the, the old tool belt to have on your account. No doubt about that. Not much more to say about uh, the character, right? We've seen her abilities. We've seen her passives. Um, she does have an accessory, actually, that's only she can equip. I actually think this is pretty relevant, so we should check it out really quick. If we go into the exchange, hey buddy. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to bump him. If we go to the arena fragments. I might even save up to get this first. So this is a unique only she can equip it, right? Tickle in only. Um, 150 elemental attack and lower SP consumption by 20%. So just a fat stack of elemental attack and a fat stack of SP consumption down. Um, definitely like this feels like this is a part of her kit that she's missing in her own passive abilities, right? Like it's kind of neat that she's an elemental mate, you know, stuff, but she doesn't have that much stuff to boost her elemental attack. I mean, it'll be cool to use a, um, innocent sword, right? Instead of the Fenrir sword on her, but then this is the kind of thing that she really needs. Just a big stack of elemental attack to kind of help her compensate for what other characters are going to be naturally doing through their weapons. Um, like Sophia, right? Sophia just has like a huge amount of elemental attack. And so I think she does need this kind of special ability to get it. In fact, I think I'm going to save up 300 to get that. It's it's hard though. 300 for that versus 300 of that. Either way, I don't know. But yeah, that's going to be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for Platypus. 
is Perplautopus. I will see you next time. See you guys.